Good evening to the honorable speakers of today's webinar. Our president, Mr. Arnab Jha, coordinator, HRD committee, Mr. Ratan Chaudhuri, distinguished guests and the participants. You might be aware our association is organizing series of webinars on relevant topics with knowledgeable and dignified speakers since last nine months with the objective to promote leather and its allied industries during this critical period due to pandemic. Our subcommittees of HRD, seminar and welfare are working very hard in organizing such webinars and it is appreciated by many eminent people of the leather fraternity. Today's webinar is also very useful and informative for Indian leather industry. Let's start the event with welcome address by our President, Mr. Anup Jha. Good evening, Mr. Shushant Mullik, General Secretary of IRTA, Mr. Ratan Choudhury, Coordinator, HRD, Honorable Mr. Claudi Mafidetti, CEO of Indo Italian Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Guel Thierry Guel Arto, CEO of Component and Equipment Limited, Mr. Ashok Kumar Banerjee, immediate past president, Calcutta Management Association, and retired professor of IIM Kolkata. Members, colleagues, students, and friends from industry and other participants, I, on behalf of IITA, feel myself privileged to welcome you all to join the webinar titled Branding of Leather this evening. To a common man like us, brand is a name, term, design, symbol, or other feature that identifies one seller's good or services as clearly different from those of the other sellers. Brands are used in business, marketing, and advertising, publishing for recognition, and quite importantly, to create and store the value as brand equity for the object identified to the advantage of brand's customers, its owners, and stakeholders. Branding and labeling of heightened skills have an ancient story. It probably began with the practice of branding livestock to differ taped images of the branding of cattle occur in ancient Egyptian tomb dating to around 2700 BC. Over time, purchasers realized that the brand provided information about the origin as well as about ownership and could serve as a guide to quality. It is most unfortunate that there is almost no leather with official brand name or mark Though varieties of leathers are developed every day throughout the world, and hence brands like EI Keep, EI Goat and Sheep, or Santiniketan leather are not yet established officially. We are happy to mention that ILTA and Lexpo both are properly protected by Property Act, and impact of the brand logo, logo of Lexpo, are quite positive. For longer number of days, brands have been used to see products apart and have taken many different forms. For example, the oldest known generic brand still used today is an herbal paste from India called Chavan Pras. In the 13th century, so far we could collect, Italians began putting watermarks on their paper as a form of branding. Anyway, we have got a lot to learn on the subject of branding as related to leather and allied industry. IRTA has very befittingly arranged three presentations from the eminent speakers. They are Mr. Claudio Mafito Letti, the for keynote address, Mr. Guel Thierry Guelvarto, a case study in branding, Professor Ashok Kumar Banerjee on branding perception of business school. Hope this evening will be enjoyable to all of you. With this, I close my deliberation and wish you all to be safe and have, have good health. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Jha. 
Uh, before we start the deliberations of the honorable speakers, we request all participants to keep themselves in mute mode and video off. After completion of three deliberations, there will be a question and answer session. You may please raise your hand or send your question via chat in the meantime. We all know proper marketing strategy is one of the major pillars of success of any industry. Brand image establishment is one of the main component of any marketing strategy. Hence, today's topic, branding of leather and its products is extremely important for a sustainable growth of Indian leather industry. So let's start the webinar with the keynote address by an eminent personality, Mr. Claudio Mafioletti. Let me introduce first Mr. Claudio before he starts his deliberation. Mr. Claudio Mafioletti, Chief Executive Officer and Secretary General Indo-Italian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, IICCI, in short, Mumbai, India. Born in Vargarno, Italy, Mr. Mafioletti has a degree in Humanities from Parma University, Italy, and a PG Diploma in Management from City University, Cass Business School in London, UK. He moved to India in 2007 and became Secretary General of the IICCI in 2015. With the support of the IICCI's Board of Directors and its senior staff, he defined the IICCI's strategic vision 2015-20 with a radical change of the IICCI business model, focusing on the needs and demand of the chambers, 1,000 plus members, made of Indo-Italian joint ventures, Indian subsidiaries of Italian companies, Indian importers of Italian brands, products and technologies, Italian exporters, and individuals seeking to have an authentic experience of Italy or India. Currently, he is executing the IICI strategic vision 2020-2023, including rapid digitization, fundraising and project financing, multi-year cluster project in apex sectors of Indo-Italian trade and investments, such as Make in India with Italian machinery, smart urban infrastructure, agri, food tech, furniture and design, higher education, food and wine, engineering and leather and textiles. So now I request Mr. Claudio to start his keynote address. Thank you. Thank you indeed. A very warm evening to all of you and thank you to the Indian Leather Technologies Association for inviting me. Thanks to the President, Mr. Jad, to the Secretary General, Mr. Malik, and to Mr. Chaudhary to reaching out to us and involving us in this extremely interesting initiative of yours. Um, my presentation today will be basically structured in, um, in three parts. One part is sharing and showing to you what is the um, added value of what I call brand Italy. I'm talking about an entire country, not about specific, specific companies as far as leather um, and the leather industry is concerned. Well, I will be sharing with you some data about trade between India and Italy, um, about 
what is happening on uh, in the leather sector and some ancillary sectors between India and Italy. I will be then sharing with you what is making the Italian leather industry so unique and what could be the elements of uh, um, collaboration, of synergy, of um, uh, partnership between Italy and India in the leather, in the leather industry. And finally, I, I would take a little bit more of your time to talk a, a little bit about our chamber, what we do, who we are, and what are the projects that we, that we, that we undertake. So the Italian leather industry as a general is uh, renowned worldwide. We are first in the exports of tannery machinery and we have our approximately 55% of the global market share. First in the export of leather goods machinery, 35% of market share. Second in exports of footwear machinery after, after China. Our, um, the total value of Italian production of footwear, leather goods, and tanning technologies is up to 620 million uh, euros yearly, out of which 70% is for the export, for the uh, um, international market. And what is very interesting, and perhaps what is a very characterizing, if not unique, characteristic of the Italian industry, as many other industries, um, not only for leather, is that we are a cluster-based uh, um, economy. We have several main clusters as far as leather industry as a whole is, uh, is involved in different regions, Lombardy, Lombardy, Veneto, Tuscany, Emilia Romagna, Piedmont, Marche, Campania. And uh, it's typically an industry which is based on collaborations and synergies between several uh, small and medium sized companies that then serve the uh, mainstream uh, brands and the mainstream industry. Um, this slide, which is taken um, as a courtesy from ASOMAC, which is the Italian Association of um, Leather Machinery, shows a little bit what are the main markets of destination of Italian, Italian exports divided in three macro categories, tannery machineries, footwear machinery, leather goods machinery. And if you have a look at what is the status in the Asian continent, Asian and Southeast Asian, you see that one of the major sorry, the major destination of Italian machinery in these three um, segments is Vietnam, which definitely is for India, a very strong competitor as far as production of um, uh, leather goods and leather um, products is uh, concerned. India is obviously one of the most important markets for Italian exports, but it has a very specific focus on tannery machinery, which represents the main area of collaboration and trade between Italy and, and India. So what has been in the past five years, the performance of the trade between India and Italy? In all, in five years, there has been an exchange of goods, machinery, and products uh, of two, more than two, uh, 2.5 billion US dollars, where Indian exports to Italy represent approximately uh, 2, billion, 2 billion US dollars and Italian exports to India 730 million with a trade balance, which is definitely in favor of India. Hopefully in the next few years, this uh, imbalance will be somehow sorted out and, and corrected because of an increasing trade of goods and machinery and technologies from Italy to, to India. Indian imports, uh, Italy is the second uh, trade partner after China uh, for India. And as you can see the difference uh, as far as the leather industry is concerned with other European uh, or Western UK and the US is very, very um, deep because we in five years we have exported, as I said, 730 million euros of total exports as against 122 of Germany, 119 of France, and so on with the other main partners. What does uh, India imports from Italy? Mainly, I would say uh, almost 85% of the total is raw hides, 
followed by chemicals, which is a very important item in the trade between Italy and India, a little bit less in, in, in terms of machinery for footwear, tannery and leather goods. What India exports to, um, to the world in general, um, um, Italy is the fourth uh, trade partner of India after US, Germany, UK, and before China and France with a total, as I said, of approximately $1.8 billion in the past five years. And what is exported back to Italy are leather goods, semi-finished semi or finished leather goods, footwear, and semi-finished skins. Um, a few insights about the Italian tanning industry, and those are um, slides with I'm sharing with you, taken from the report which is publicly public publicly available on the uh, Italian Tannery Association which gives you uh, an insight of what are the main facts and figures about the industry in in Italy we have more than 1000 companies as opposed to this is the report for year 2019 so there had, there had been already a decrease a slight decrease in number of companies more than 17000 employees 116 million square meter, meters of finished leather produced and 10,000 tons of sole leather. A total production value approximately of 4.6 billion euros. Exports are equal to 3.3 billion euros. What are the main destinations? Um, which markets do this pro product go to? mainly is for the um, footwear industry, approximately 40%, leather goods, bags and, 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 uh, and the rest and accessories, furniture industry, car interiors and garments and, and gloves. The main clusters specifically as far as the tanning industry is concerned are mainly four. Veneto is the biggest one with uh, approximately 450 company and a turnover of 2.6 million euro per company. Um, Tuscany followed by Tuscany with approximately 500 companies. Campania in the south of Italy with 145 company in Lombardy with a little bit more than 35, 35 companies. So in total, the entire clusters have a number of um, uh, the other regions include a total of uh, 600 employees and 30 companies. So yeah, as you can see, the production is mainly concentrated in these four regions of Italy. What is the um, in undisputed leadership of Italy as far as the tanning industry is concerned? In Europe, we represent 65% of the total value of production and 69% of exports of finished leather to extra EU country as uh, value is concerned. Worldwide, we have a 23% market share and 29% of total trade and uh, um, international exchanges about uh, finished leather products. This is the performance uh, monitoring of the presence of Italian companies, brands, and products worldwide. As you can see, there has been a steady increase, both in terms of production and in terms of exports. In terms of exits, it has been a little bit more um, uh, volatile, especially between the years 2010 and 2015. But as you, as you can see, starting from 2015, there has been a steady, a steady growth. Obviously, we are not considering 2020, which represents somehow um, year zero for the entire global economy. What are the main areas of destination of the Italian finished leather products? Mainly the EU, which is obviously the um, easiest and most accessible market for most of the Italian companies, but Asia represents one fourth of the total exports of Italy, 24% after the total. The remainder is between North America, Russia and other countries. For 3.3 billion euros of total exports, to a total of almost 120, 120 countries. Um, 
what is instead what are the numbers with regards to imports of raw hides and skins and semi-finished leather materials um 785,000 tons imported from approximately 120 countries mainly from the eu from south america as you can see there is very little of nothing from the asian continent so what makes italy a very particular and uh, a very advanced and uh, pioneering market and uh, um, know-how as far as the leather industry is concerned. Well, Italy is, um, and most of Italy's producers are very well aware, and in most of the cases are uh, complying with uh, what are the three main sectors, three main regulatory framework, if you can call them like that. Um, on one side, there are the um, sustainable development goals, which have been defined by the UN uh, with the aim of achieving a better and more sustainable future for all by 20 and 50. Similarly, the uh, recently announced and um, um, implemented EU Green New Deal, which focuses on a circular economy in all sectors as to make Europe a climate neutral um, continent within 2050. And then there, is some there are some specific nation-specific nation regulations which um, look into the leather industry with some uh, more specific um, approach. And in Italy, it's been approved and passed in uh, June 2020, one law that regulates the usage of the word leather and hide in the, in the labeling of the products with some hefty penalties for those who can um, uh, contravent this kind of regulations. What is circular economy? This is a slide in Italian, but it shows very clearly what, is the, what are the entire processes involved in uh, an ideal um, life cycle of uh, a leather product, starting from the animal husbandry, where the, where the animals are, um, uh, are taken care of from the slaughterhouse to the tanning uh, um, plant to the production plant and, and at the end of it to the consumers. And you can see that many, many of the waste of the result materials of the production are in any case reused after certain internal processes to minimize and to reuse as much as possible all the waste in various industry. Obviously, you have the food industry, but you also have the healthcare, the cosmetics, and the nutraceutic uh -huh. industry. And then you have the agricultural um, industry as well. And as you can see, there is also in this chart, in this diagram, a very specific indication of what should be ideally all the processes to be followed in order to minimize waste. And in yeah. particular, in what is it considered in Italy and in, in Europe as the enemy, public enemy number one, which is which is chromium, which should be recycled and reused as much as possible and disposed of in a proper in a proper manner. So, what will be, in our opinion, and from our point of observation, which is that of a bilateral institution promoting trade and investments between India and Italy. Obviously, making India, this is the um, golden rule of the day, but using Italian technologies, Italian know-how, because we do avail, we do have cutting edge technologies, cutting edge knowledge and know-how that is ready to be shared with our Indian partners and, uh, and friends. Mainly keeping in mind two destination markets, Obviously, the international markets, I'm thinking here of the European market and the North American market, wherein the regulations are pretty um, strict and binding for any importers from uh, outside the borders, but also, and more importantly, for the domestic uh, market, which means the Indian market and for the Southeast Asian markets, for the reason that I will explain last. Make it also circular. 
Circularity is not just a way to uh, improve and to minimize the impact of industries and production on the environment, but it has also some immediate, immediate benefits to the community, which is uh, somehow affected by these kind of industries and that has to live and uh, exist in, um, in, uh, in partnership and in harmony with the producers of leather, leather products and, uh, and, um, and the deriv derivatives. We keep in mind that life cycle, life cycle assessment and the monitoring assessment and certification of supply chains will become, will become more and more important and pervasive in international trade and in the marketing strategies of companies. Last but not least, brand it as sustainable. We have undertaken in the past several studies with in collaboration with uh, some um, global consulting firm, firms, PwC to be, to be specific, in which there is a very clear indication that the, that the youngest generations and millennials and the Z generations are extremely aware and vocal about the um, compliance of uh, fashion brands as far as sustainability principles and international standards are concerned. They are extremely keen in having as much transparency on labels and on the websites of companies as far as tracking and origins of the materials used for the clothes, for the bags, for the products that they use. Uh, and, they, and they purchase, and that is going to become a very important element that will, according to me, define the competitive edge of many companies, of many brands, not only in India, but globally in the, in the, next, in the next few years. Um, I'll take, as I anticipated, a little bit more of your time to spare a few words about our chamber. We are officially recognized by the Tanya Ministry of Economic Development. We have five offices in India. Our head office is in Mumbai, then we have regional offices in Delhi, Calcutta, Chennai, and Bangalore. Our regional uh, office manager in Calcutta, Jyoti Saha, is also present today with, uh, with us, and she will be available after the webinar for any query that uh, the participants might, might have. We have a, a membership base of approximately 1,000 members, um, mainly Indo-Italian joint ventures and Indian subsidiaries of Italian companies in, in India, but also a good amount, a substantial amount of Indian agents, importers, distributors, and retailers of um, Italian brands, products, and technologies. The Indo-Italian business com community counts on almost 700 companies, 650 Italian companies that have invested and set up shop in India and approximately 50 Indian companies that have invested in, in Italy. Approximately 500 buyers, so manufacturers buying or retailers buying directly Italian products and uh, technologies or Indian products and, uh, and um, raw materials. We count with no less than 800 service providers, including consulting firms, law firms, chartered accountants, transportation companies, um, HR uh, companies, and so on and so forth. We have a network of approximately 6,000 6, individuals, both Italians that have a specific interest and passion towards India and the other way around, Indians that ha are particularly passionate and interested about, about Italy. Um, in economic terms, the total trade between Italy, Italy and India amounts to approximately 9 billion euros, which is a substantial amount, but it's far below the potential that Italy and India could have. Um, the cross-border investments between Italy and India amount in total to approximately 3.5 billion euros. We are part of a global network of Italian chambers of commerce in the world and in the, in, in the, Indian, in the Asian continent. In total, we have 81 chambers present in 58 countries and in Asia, we are 12 chambers in the main present in the main in the main Asian markets, um, we do promote sustainability, and that's the reason why I stressed so much on this subject during this presentation on 
um, best practice and we represent, promote, and give visibility to best practice practices as far as sustainability and CSR activities are concerned by our member companies, both Italian companies in India, but also Indian companies doing business with, with Italy. Impresa Awards is one award that we um, assign every year to the members that best perform on uh, several indicators. There is environmental sustainability, there is human rights uh, um, uh, compliance, there is the attention to the supply chain and the attention to the immediate community as uh, elements on, on which the awards are, are, are given. My presentation is over. I'm obviously available for any query you might have. And um, thank you very much again. Thank you, Mr. Claudia, for your highly motivational and informative address. We'll come back to you in the question and session if you are not, if you are staying for another uh, 40 minutes, so you'll, you can start the question and session or- I'll be there, I will stay there, absolutely. Okay, thank you. Uh, let me introduce Professor Ashok Banerjee, our second speaker. Uh, Professor Ashok Banerjee, DD, <coughs> Graduate Studies in Science and Technology. DD is postgraduate in management from IIM Calcutta in 1970. He has nearly three decades of top and senior level management exposure in leading MNCs and TNCs and Indian companies and has a teaching experience at the postgraduate level for two decades. May I request Mr. Mitra, please mute yourself. So we please mute Mr. Mr. Mitra. Before joining the IAM group as a senior faculty in 2011, he was the professor and head of department of MBA program in IISWBM, Calcutta University. He is also a research guide in various universities students, including the University of Calcutta. He was also involved in various capacities in IIEST Sipur, MDI Murshidabad, IMT, and St. Xavier's University as a host of IIMS. He was also the chairman of IIM Calcutta Alumni Association for four years and is currently a past chairman and chairman's council member of IIM Calcutta Alumni Association. He is currently the immediate past president of 60 years old Calcutta Management Association, the oldest management association in the country. He is also the council member of the All India Management Association of India, representing Eastern India Management Associations. He is presently associated with many distinguished business schools as visiting faculty, including MDI Murshidabad. His hobbies, hobbies include traveling, listening to music and sports. Mr. Banerjee will deliver <clears throat> on branding perception of business school. Professor Banerjee, please. Well, Professor Banerjee, do uh, unmute or any? Professor Banerjee, yeah. please unmute yourself. Uh, I can you. And start the deliberation. Yeah, yeah. Good evening, all of you. In fact, it was such a wonderful disposition by Mr. Claudio. I think, you know, I thought of uh, not going to my slide. You know, that's one thing. In fact, I'll be starting my slide later on. So, right. Uh, after this wonderful thing, I must compliment everybody who ever is present in this August gathering, including the organizers, Mr. Molik, Mr. President, sir, and obviously Mr. Rostan Chaudhuri. And all the committee members, because I am also very, very happy that I am part of you. Uh, three things. I'll be delivering 
on branding and perception in the minds of students. Number two, I can also be talking of India, how India can become from a commodity to a global brand. And number three, I shall also be talking the challenges ahead. Okay. So, begin with what is branding to me? In fact, I the definition branding is B for basic. Any brand must meet your basic needs. B for R for relationship. It must develop relationship with the target group of customers. Please note the word target group. I never say the word, you know, consumers and customers. I always say target group. Because if my target group is young teeny boppers, I think I should be going to that teeny boppers. So my design will be keeping in my care department. So it's just a level of relationship. That area which TV has done, TV has become the global brand leader all because of they could understand the TV requirements very specifically. We have just seen the presentation, the millennials and the great generation. Okay. So ask for relationship. A for aspiration. It must be the aspiration of the people. My target group. Again, I will go into point TG, the target consumers. Uh, in for needs, we must meet the needs, you know, needs of the target group. It must be needs specific. In marketing, we have definition. We must meet the needs of the target group of customers. Needs specific. So, uh, then B is disciplined. So we must have a disciplined, dedicated effort. If anybody thinks that look, I do branding and I'll be getting results from tomorrow, that luck. No. Branding is a very, very high work on branding for many companies. I can assure you one thing that branding is not an overnight activity. Branding is not a fly by night operator job. Branding is a long term sustainable activity by a group of people, dedicated group of people. So I will innovate. Any brand will have to be innovative. You just cannot say, I just give a very small example. India is so good in jute. I'm sure Indian leather and Indian jute can collaborate together. In fact, you have just talked about Shantinika, the brand famous for Rubinanath Tebo, the, the first nobler from Asia. So the Shantinika brand can be just, in fact, uh, the design that Shantinika produces can be re-added. And then we should be going for the innovation in a much better way with the of the quality circle. Because any Indian company, because Indian leader, unfortunately, is perceived to be MSME sector specific. No, it's not. There are also big players. Because we know Kanpuri is still accepted to be the Indian's uh, leader capital. But, you know, what happens, I think, is Kanpur, and I don't see much of the bigger, bigger things of all these things. The position thing and all. So you must follow quality manner. What is the very... <laughs> Specific thing. Mr. <clears throat> Mr. Banner, yeah. disturbing very much. Can you can you improve it? Can you improve by changing your place? No, because there is a load chain we are using generate as I told you. The current has not come yet. Oh, so, so you are you are working working uh, on the generator. Can you hear me now? Oh you are you are working on the generator power, right? Can, so, you, can you can you hear me now? Yeah, I, you can hear no. Yeah, yeah, I'm using now. I'm using my handset, not the, not the, not my laptop. The laptop was the generator, and that is on from your lithium battery. Right. Sorry, Mr. Banerjee, it doesn't seem to be a connection issue. It seems to be a disturbance in the audio system more than a connection. Connection seems to be perfectly fine. Are you using a plug or something, perhaps, because it's very disturbed? No, I'm using Android. I'm using oh. Android and and I'm uh, using my mobile, you know, not uh, not a laptop. Laptop is switched off. Laptop was a generator. Anyway, uh, second point, which is very important. Mr. Banerjee, do you have a microphone? No, I don't have a microphone. No, I'm using my Google. Uh, I've come out of this thing. No, I am not using hand free. No, 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 no hand free, nothing, nothing. No, I no, think no, I can no. be hard. Uh, now, most important point that Indian company should do, we must shed the image that we are no more in a commodity-based marketing. 
define in a competitive based marketing i am world number one producer of i but you know people don't know that because in commodity marketing i don't earn profit so msm is sector they feel there is no profit still there is no profit there is no good business opportunity so we must always do any company going to a business must be detailed project analysis i call it dpr detailed project review before they go for business so next point which i will be talking we must have a goal you know and as i told you anything should be need specific and any company must have a goal okay i think i just got a good suggestion stopping the video will be editing because i am not using the video now can you hear me now no, 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 no. it is cracking it is cracking very much very very cracking because you know i made so much of this thing i don't know why it's cracking i still don't understand because uh, can you can you change the place can you change the place so we can we can give you another slot no i have come out of my uh, my flat i am not in my flat i have come out of the house what you see i am in the yes now Can you hear me now? No, yeah. no. It is cracking. We can hear can you. you. Not clear at all. Can you stop the video? Let me see if I can stop the video. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. I can hear. Okay. Now we have gone to only the so video is not there now. Now we are only on the. audio a little bit so can you hear me little, little bit better yes little bit i can hear with all of you i can hear you yeah, right okay so next point is i am trying to tell you an indian company in the msme sector must go for a qa dc analysis what does qa this is one of my model if i have worked on this since we published from oxford you know the seminars uh, q for quality and quality control and quality assurance Air force service, pre sales, during sales, and after sales. Ah, uh, V for value addition, C for cost leadership, and then differentiation. We have been talking about segmentation in a big manner. The Indian companies do segmentation, but our segmentation is very, very bad. Extremely poor segmentation we do. We don't understand segmentation at all. So I, as student of management, I feel segmentation has to be done. Keep in mind the requirements of the customers. We must do a lot of analysis. We must do a lot of analysis. A lot of research will be needed before we go for segmentation in a big manner. And for that, for the students, I have a little formula, very well known formula, Mazda. Any segmentation, ladies and gentlemen, friends should follow Mazda. It should be measurable. It should be accessible. It should be substantial. It should be differentiable, and it should be actionable. is one of our formula and any segmentation must follow i am going to portland now any segmentation as professor phil kotler should be geographic should be demographic should be viable and should be psychographic anyway so that all known so that takes book now point number 2 because in the time is short and i will be now going to the perception matrix to be perception is what the consumer expects from me in fact i like the student community to remember is a is a like is a like a table is like a chair chair or table has got four leg leg number one is industry institute are uh, their interaction i i i industry institute interaction triple i i call it i i i this i is industry institute and interface there must be a regular interface because if you do a summer project you must go to an industry where you can learn the thing hands down so there is nothing wrong in learning things i can cite examples of many great people who had to learn things here i'll giving an example of a great indian scientist acharya prabhu chandra rao the person who gave us the feeling of entrepreneurship in india acharya prabhu chandra rao learned everything hands down take an example i can give again from the field of education sir ashutosh mukhopadhyay the first indian vice chancellor of the university of calcutta so they learned everything hands down so you have to learn everything hands down so first 
leg is the industry student interface. Second is the faculty. So your institutes have got the excellent faculty. Faculty should be made to interact with the students in a regular manner. By attending seminars and conferences, you develop the decisions with the faculty. You also go on publishing papers. In the process, your network activity goes up. Third point, which I very strongly feel, you must select an institute based on the reputation. So I very strongly believe the reputation of the institute counts. So for that, the student body, the alum, they play a very important role. Take the case of any university, because I was giving example of University of Calcutta. Who are the alums? I, I, you know, I don't going to name them. In fact, it, they are very partial. But most of the Indian Nobel are from the University of Calcutta. Sir so, C.B. Raman, Rabindranath Tagore, and Amartya Sen are all products of Calcutta University, including OBC, OPG, Vinay Bandhupat, the recent Nobel laureate. So, fourth point, which I love to tell you, fourth leg of the table or chair is you, your own initiative. How much you can pick up initiative with your own efforts? You have to be seeing. Here I'll be going to give a very old Sanskrit quote, and I'll translate that in English. You have to go on striving hard to find out what went wrong. So you must go on, unless you learn, I'm quoting APJ Abdul Kalam, unless you learn how to commit mistakes, you can never learn a job. So you must learn students, that's the perception. I must harm Honge Kamiya, we shall overcome. We shall overcome. That should be our motto. Ham Honge Kamiya. Now, last point, the, the third point of my presentation will be how can Indian companies produce results in a highly competitive, very, very truncated VUCA market. Today's environment is VUCA. Volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. That you must know this environment has become ambiguous very much. Extremely ambiguous. So that I think you know we have to understand very, very categorically. We have to understand that very categorically. This volatile, uncertain, complex environment is becoming a big challenge for you all. So I have one formula for this. ASK, attitude, skills, and knowledge. So Mr. Claudia has already told that, look, Indian companies can pick up a lot of relationships because the days of confrontation over now, it is days of cooperation. So Indian companies must go for cooperation. And leather is a big labor intensive industry and the tremendous scope for job creation and is always better to be a job creator rather than be a job seeker. So Indians should develop, Indian manufacturers should develop the skill that yes, we can do branding, A, B. We can make it, a, make it to begin with an Indian brand, then course of them regional brand and an international brand. In fact, I very strongly believe and I very strongly suggest Indian companies must go for a sort analysis, strength, weakness, opportunity trade analysis before they venture to any new market. To conclude my presentation, I'd love to tell you the thing that please remember the roads are rough, they're very tough, but at end of the day, end of the tunnel, there is a ray of hope. And Indian companies, I'm sure, by handholding, we are able to reach the goal. Together, we will be able to achieve our results, and it will give us a tremendous amount of perception that Indian brands are global class. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks once again. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Banerjee, for your deliberation on brand perception. Let me introduce our third speaker, Mr. Gualteri. Golvarto. Mr. Golvarto is an eminent personality in leather field with enormous experience in working with several renowned organizations in different parts of the world. To take few names, 
सी एन ई लिमिटेड चेन्नई इंडिया एज सीओ टू ट्रांसफॉर्म सी एन ई एज ए ग्लोबल ब्रांड इन लेदर केमिकल बिजनेस एल एल सी एक्सपो लेदर लिमिटेड यूके एज ए कंसल्टेंट टू डेवलप लेदर प्रोसेसेस फॉर यूक्रेन टेनरीज टेनरीज डू पी यू आई ए ग्रुप ऑफ पी पी आई फ्रांस एज असिस्टेंट टू द जॉइंट डायरेक्टर फॉर द आइडेंटिफिकेशन ऑफ द बेस्ट ट्रेनिंग मशीनरीज ऑन द मार्केट एंड टू सेट अप न्यू ले आउट फॉर द टेनरीज He then worked on Seria del Ciente, Italy, as consultant to the board of directors for the creation of new line of high-end leather articles. Mr. Choudhary, please mute yourself. When Seria. Lamba Tiger Jaya, Indonesia, as advisor to CEO, with task of developing a new series of articles and market analysis and setting up new companies and marketing strategies. Consiglia Everest SRL Italy, as advisor to the CEO for market analysis and restructuring of sales network. Consiglia Jaipur SRL. as advisor for the creation of the network of national and international sales and contacts with the major fashion groups fab the fashion auxiliary products switzerland joint as manager of fab for expansion of the activities of the company in india indonesia korea japan and china sima piazi srl italy joint as vice president member of the board of directors and shareholder of a leading hotel company alpa spa milano italy as ceo of alpa spa he worked for the productive and commercial expansion in south american indian korean japanese markets and also to create two new production units in brazil and india his academic achievements are he was diploma in chemical engineering from universita di friburgo he completed three year course in industrial chemistry from universita di pisa he also completed diploma in scientific track from liceo benedetto do croce roma he can speak he can speak in several languages and having knowledge in software engineering now i request mr golvarto to start your deliberation on case study on branding of leather and allied industry thank you right thank you so much to everybody uh, for inviting me on this uh, digital meeting Uh, I hope that I can make uh, an appreciable contribution with my speech. Uh, I don't want to speak about a letter, but uh, I want to speak uh, how the Italian creates uh, Italian brands in the global market. Uh, as you say, during my long career, I had the opportunity to be in contact with many fashion brands. I had a chance to have relationship both as a direct and indirect supplier of important made in Italy brands, and I got a chance to look at them closely with even the opportunity to know their history. Now, coming to the point of my speech, the question is how Italians have managed to create what is universally recognized. in the global market at the sound of the italian brand to understand how this happened it is necessary first of all to talk about made in italy which is the real driving force of this poster if we we talk about made in italy 
in the collective imagination, the reference goes immediately to the big fashion brands like Fendi, Armani, Ferragamo, Gucci, Prada, and etc. And of course, on Ferrari, that is considered universally the flag of the country. But made in Italy, it is not only that. It is a, a more complex phenomenon that includes several industrial sectors and economics activities of the Italian system, who goes from industrial goods to typical agricultural products and tourism. The Made in Italy concept can be defined in a unique sense because it is extremely more structured fact and cannot be linked to the simple literal meaning of the term that usually indicates the goods produced on the Italian territory. What I'm saying is that uh, generalizes the concept uh, considered made in Italy simple, simply as uh, everything that is produced in Italy is wrong. The made in Italy is not just a label, it is much more. It is uh, an outer signature. It is a distinctive trademark that recalls the idea of a unique and special product. In Italian case, the product that take more benefit from the country effort are those of the sectors of fashion, furniture, and food, the three half of Made in Italy. Another, another element of great value is the fact that Italians have developed what is called an art of living. The sharing with the whole world of the concept of Italian living that the mass media and Western culture have helped to shape in the collective imagination has created a well-defined idea of Italian living, which has become an expression of elegance and quality. The Italian living is in effect synonymous of well life in every aspect of daily life, from dressing to eating and surrounding yourself with objects designed and built to improve the quality of your life. Well, from here, buying a product labeled as in Made in Italy, it means in the modern logic of consumption to be part of the authentic Italian life. But where does made in Italy get its origins? To understand the development process and the success of made in Italy, it is necessary to consider the historical period in which this evolution has started and the establishment of the industrial network that allowed the production of the goods that be part of that level. The basis of this evolution takes place in the period from 1950 until the Bretton Woods International Agreements come to the hand. And from there, a further transformation will begin. Of particular importance in the historical period from 1958 to 1963, which is called the Italian Economic Miracles. During this period, investment in manufacturing industry rose from 5.2% of GDP in 1953 to 6.3% in 1963. Between the years 1950 and 1961, GDP rose by an average of 6.7% per annum, and industrial production reached 47% of the GDP, while the trade balance went from a negative value of $350 million in 1952 to a positive one of $745 million in 1959. Revaluated to the data is like a talking about a shift from a negative balance of 12 billion to a positive balance of 28 billion a delta of 40 billion. 
This period was a fundamental stage in the development of the network companies that even today give a life to the products that they are symbols of the made in Italy. The characteristics of these products, in fact, are closely linked to the special future of the production structure and economic framework that was developed in Italy during that period. As I say, that the Made in Italy was born in a particular historical moment. At that time, the network was consisting of a small size enterprise, very often of a family character, which over the further decades have evolved and adapted to operate in the global market subject to rapid changes. This process this process of building uh, the Italian industrial apparatus began with the gradual disappearance of a small traditional enterprises like uh, carpenters, blacksmith, cobbles, and uh, their transformation into small manufacturing enterprise. The phenomenon was particularly marked in the central North Italy where just in those years started to form the agglomeration of small enterprises that would be transformed into real industrial district. Uh, Mr. Maffioletti, they just show uh, the, the Veneto and the Tuscany, but in Veneto we have Arzignano and we have a Santa Croce. So then the, the, the two big industrial district. Guido Carli, who was a, a famous Italian economist, Governor of the Bank of Italy and Minister of Treasury claims that the development of this network of industries through the 20 years in 1950-1970 represented the most important economy and social fact of our Italian history. This structure of newly created small enterprise has its origin above all in the craft activity that were carried out at the local level. The transformation of these activities into more structured form of enterprise was a natural development of them without losing their fundamental characteristics. In these new companies, what was shifted has been only how the production process was organized. It was moved from a production in the workshop into a new well-organized and structured plans. The production increased, but without missing the focus on both quality of products and raw materials. Gucci and Ferragamo, and the district of the Harno Valley with his tailoring, tanners, manufacturers of accessory and machineries are the evidence of the change described and still represent an indispensable supply chain for the fashion sector, starting from leather to the final product. In summary, uh, we are talking about the Renaissance applied to the fashion that contaminates the world war, the heart of doing well industrialism. Two examples for all. The timeless and iconic French bags, such as the 255 by Chanel and the Lady Dior by Christian Dior. They carry inside the words made in Italy and are manufactured in the Tuscan district by skeleton letters tailoring. During the 70s, started a new evolution chapter of the made in Italy. There has been a progressive loss of weight in the traditional industrial sector to the advantage of the goods sector that are come under the made in Italy level. It is a significant that the made in Italy sector recorded a positive performance both during the, the period mentioned above and during the sequence 90s 
when the, the rest of the Italian and European economy showed, on the contrary, seen of slowing down. What happened was that in the most developed countries, the new emerging classes starting to have higher incomes and they start looking for goods that becoming symbol and their new state of prosperity and to obtain them were willing to pay higher prices. In this period, the mass production of standardized products typical of for this model were no longer suitable to meet the new needs of customers. In this historical moment, companies realized that it was no longer enough to offer output of low prices, but that it was necessary to offer consumers a range of products to meet the specific needs of each. In this concept, the Italian district companies found themselves at an advantage over the others, since they were ready, thanks by their nature, to offer products that respond to those new needs. The artisanal character focused on the person that these productions had maintained, allowed them to answer to the new needs of those customers. The Italian industrial district were the best well prepared to enter in this new niche market, where they managed to gain a stable leadership position. Another important point has been the fact that addressing to this new type of customer, the district enterprise did not suffer from the competition of the coming low cost products from the emerging, emerging countries and succeeding to guarantee also good profit margins. There is a famous Gucci advertising example that said quality is remembered long after price is forgotten. Well, the Italian manufacturing companies managed to fit into the dynamics of the world market using their natural strength, the quality of their products and attention to the customers. It is in this context that the made in Italy becomes synonymous of quality, craftsmanship, and the sophistication of products, also helped by the remarkable attention from the media around the world. During the 70s and 80s, the Italian Pret a Porter won the international leadership to the, uh, to the detriment of the rivals, however, the French. So much so that in 1980, the International Herald Tribune wrote, the race between Milano and Paris was in a full progress and Milano was in a clear improvement. Paris provided inspiration and a direction. Milano reached the reality of the interpretation and manufacturing. France earned the glory, but the Italians are good in making money. The 90s was the time in which we have seen the worldwide definitive success of the Made in Italy. It has been estimated that if the Made in Italy was a brand in the true sense of the term, it would be placed in the third place in the ranking of the most famous brands in the world, positioning itself after Coca-Cola and Visa. Personally, I think that this is the reason why in the last 20 years, the acquisition by the French players of fashion and the major international financial fund of the best Italian producer. Could you hear me? Oh. Hello? Oh, stop, hello. 
Yes, sir. We are hearing, sir. Right. Yes. Could you? All right. All right. Yes, sir. Sorry, because it's coming. No, it's coming. One message. You no, no, no. We are hearing, sir. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Very good. Very good. Okay. What What I am saying that uh, what I think is that the, by the acquisition by the French players of fashion and the major international financial found on of the best Italian producer and tailorist that they have not developed the necessary capacity to operate as an industrial chain and were not enough supported by the national financial system. And from the other side, the growth of some fast fashion giants, such as Inditex and HM, which essentially they move on as a fast copy of the Made in Italy. We have to take in mind that the export of Made in Italy referent to the clothing, accessories, and footwear is worth more than 50 billion euros per year. I'm talking about the export, just the export. I'm not talking about the domestic market. <laughs> anyway, but now let me take a, a step forward to ask ourselves how the world scenario will change after this dark period. What will happen at considering the Middle Italy was hit in its fifth essence, that is the Italian heart of living. Uh, Federico Moiron writes in the sociology of fashion that fashion is dynamism and change and hallow has to disclose the patterns, archetypes, and great anthropological structure that define an, our, an area. We cannot think of fashion as a phenomenon it is on right, but we must always imagine it in the society and in the reference context. Since uh, the choices of the individual comes from a social, economics and cultural events. It is not simply fashion that changes. Fashion is the uh, is an, a superficial expression of a deeper transformation of the social life. It can be assumed that in the fashion system will become more and more critical the case point as information and communication about the products. The management and organization of the supply network, traceability of the supply environmental and collection management. Well, in conclusion, we can summarize uh, in the following words the Made in Italy focus. Sound, first it would be the sound that recalls the idea of a unique and special product. The second, it would be obsessive attention to the quality of product which depends on raw material, production process, machinery, and operators. A great consideration to the customer needs, credibility, traceability of the supply chain, environmental, great attention of the delivery chain, sense of the above points by the target customers. Now, concluding, I would like to say that in CND is what we have been trying to achieve in the recent years. Proud to have taken a roadmap of the main India that want to show planning with a new life through an international contamination without forget the cultural origins. Now our intention, we would like to be interpreters of a different new and modern thinking, giving a greater impulse to our identification in Begin Made in India. Thank you, guys. Uh, it was a real pleasure. I hope that uh, 
it was uh, it was uh, it was something interesting for all of you thanks a lot thank you thank you thank you thank you mr thank you. golberto we we are actually waiting for little more longer deliberation from you because it was very interesting sorry i i I think a little Extremely bit interesting delivery. So, you know, isn't it? Isn't it? You know, uh, made in Italy. Made in Italy is the real brand. Made in Italy is the real brand. You know, that obviously the companies are there, but made in Italy is the real brand. Thank you. It's, thank it's you a much. great pleasure. I, I have to thank you for uh, for this invitation. Uh, let me uh, give some opportunities to the. participants if they have any questions before that yes, i just want to summarize the points which i am able to note from the three eminent speakers uh, mr claudia said details of business of italy and india can do with each other and the opportunity for both the countries for business promotion he also highlighted the importance and benefits of creating brand by the indian companies in consultation and collaboration with italian companies for mutual interest of both the countries mr banerji highlighted the important factors should be considered in brand image creation and here is the need of change of attitude and perception of the indian companies as he emphasized mr golberto said a beautiful line which i like quality remembered longer than price really is a great line you should keep in mind for brand creation market research is extremely important orientation of product range on the basis of the changes in choices not only on prevailing fashions but also due to changes in social structure and scenarios that is also very important he said many more good points uh, which he can tell if any question arises from the participants so so should i uh, open the house for questions because or any chat any questions is in the chat uh, no <laughs> so can it be unmuted yes. mr subir anybody can ask any question all are unmuted mr ja uh, do you want to ask any question no it's all right okay, because no, no, three no, times no, 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 Hello. We cannot listen to Mr. Bengard. Yes, sir. Now you are listening. Yes, now it is okay. Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. Actually, this uh, we uh, missed a lot from uh, Ashok Banerjee, sir. Uh, what about the branding perception? Yes, is it yes. possible to uh, make any ppt if he is having a it will be very useful to us i yes, shall so be sending i shall be sending them to mr mallik and he in turn can submit to all the members because yes, you know, yes. the way the i thought of speaking extempo for the simple reason i thought branding is such a long term exercise and a few slides will be there and the time constant was there but yes, yes i shall be submitting the slides That but person, uh, my uh, but uh, what we heard, uh, it will be such a very nice uh, things for learning. So if it is possible, uh, possibly if you are having any PPT, it will be very very useful. That's why. Any other question, please? <clears throat> uh, excuse me. If uh, whilst we wait for some questions, I wanted to. add one comment if with your permission mr malik to yes, what yes. mr gualtieri gualtieri was saying about uh, made in italy and the italian psyche and there is um, one very important element which is individualism which has 
uh, the the pro and the con con side of it. There, uh, there is also an anecdote which is told by Mr. Lamborghini, the nephew of the gentleman who had launched the Lamborghini car. And he was telling that his grandfather, um, Lamborghini was born as a tractor and still is a tractor manufacturer in Italy. And, but he loved sports cars. And he was a very good friend with Mr. Enzo Ferrari, the Ferrari, the Ferrari guy. Uh, Mr. Lamborghini is from, was from Bologna, Mr. Ferrari is from um, Modena, which is 40 kilometers away. And they used to, to race together on the highway between uh, Bologna and Florence. And at some point, Mr. Lamborghini used to have uh, a Ferrari himself. So he was racing with Mr. Ferrari, and at the end of the race, he told him, you know, your car is beautiful, but the clutch is not so smooth. And Mr. Ferrari told him, what do you know about sports cars? You, you manufacture tractors, so how, how dare you tell me that my, my Ferrari's clutch is not so smooth? So Mr. Lambo Lamborghini got offended. He started making his own sports cars, and now we have Lamborghini. So this to tell you also the level of uh, uh, inventiveness, creativity, but also of competition, which is very quintessentially Italian. Mr. Valtieri pointed out that the cluster is not really on a regional basis. It's just few villages which represent productions which and brands which are known Worldwide, you think of <clears throat> eyewear, uh, um, the brands like um, uh, the most known brands in, in, in the world, they are manufacturer in a small village in the north side of Veneto. In, so, and that is very particular, it's very local, and that generates that kind of competitiveness, and I am better than you, and I can do better than you that has allowed so many Italian brands to become what they are right now. Okay. One thing, one thing, one thing Mr. Uh, Claudio, if you have any knowledge or Mr. Uh, Alberto, can you, can you tell, because I, I have read some stories, but I cannot express in a nice way. Uh, there is very interesting and fantastic stories behind each remarkable creation of a brand or a advertisement. So they are really creative. And uh, if you have in mind anything, you can speak to the participants, they will enjoy it. Like what you said now. Yeah, and bear in mind that most of the Italian very well-known brands were literally, as Mr. Gualtieri rightly pointed out, family business, the sports cars normally was a small workshop where you had a lattonista, a lattonista is someone that knows how yeah. to handle metals. You have an entrepreneur who has a passion for something, then you need obviously an engineer, a good one. You need a designer and then you need the proper machinery. So behind all these brands, there is a history of friendships very often, but also very, very uh, close collaborations with universities, design institutes, engineering uh, colleges um, that made that possible. And somehow I have attended several fora in, in, in the years where uh, with Indian counterparts and uh, the leather industry is definitely one industry is always very interested in the cluster in the Italian cluster model on how to replicate this that model in India well it's a little bit difficult because that model was born in a very specific historical moment where there was an economic boom after the war where there was a very very uh, uh, strong desire to come out of that dark periods and to and to do something beautiful there is one designer that says um yes italians are good at doing business but in in general one italian as far as uh, uh, um, design is concerned is whenever they we do something and this is a, a, an american designer talking about italians he said italians normally will not think so much as whether the product will sell or not. They will think of whether it will be liked 
and loved by people or not, which has as a consequence, and then you can sell much more actually. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The Gucci history, the Gucci history is. Uh, <laughs> Quite similar, no? You know, the, the, the founder of Gucci was an, uh, was an, a bellboy in, uh, in the most famous uh, London uh, hotel. And uh, uh, he starts to say, to say that, okay, the people, they come with uh, nice luggages and et cetera. And Gucci was born not for making bags, but making luggages. <laughs> this, is a, this is basically yeah. the story of Gucci, but, but unfortunately, you know, uh, there are Italian people, Italian people for sure, they have a vision because uh, Maurizio, Maurizio Gucci was, uh, was absolutely man in the world that they start to have a vision of the, of the international brand and the total look and was, it, it, it was the first, it was the first. Unfortunately, at that moment, uh, the, 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 the Italian, the, the Italian, the Italian uh, uh, financial, uh, uh, they, they decided don't help him and uh, they, prefer, they prefer to look in some other direction, no? Uh, we was talking today, there is a big polemic in Italy uh, regarding Leonardo. Leonardo is, uh, is uh, our, our is, uh, is the owner of Augusta, the helicopters, the famous helicopters in the world. And uh, you know, if you look at this, at this, uh, at this industry, this industry is uh, it is not the stronger. Has the fashion, the fashion district is stronger. No. So there are, there are yes, definitely there are so many. There are so many story about that. The, the, the Lavalle story is uh, is absolutely quite similar, because the origin, the origin of JP also was one uh, one very small. Uh, uh, a very small uh, uh, plant, a very small uh, shoe factory, and uh, from then uh, they start to make an empire. Thank you. Thank you, okay. Mr. Yeah. Uh, can I ask a question? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> it's a question, or you can say it's my doubt and clarification I require. It is that we have heard uh, this for the total panel. We have heard what branding is and what are the steps to be taken for a successful brand. We have also heard uh, the Italian way of living or Italian art of living. But my question is that doesn't it all boils down to the, how the perception is created or the, at the end customers, right? So how they perceive our product. And second part is perception changes because I cannot say like uh, it was said that the the uh, what to say in, uh, that mentioned Italy the, the new new generations they have now more money at their disposal so they want to have that niche type of marketing everything that means the perception is changing in that sense if this perception changes first of all whether it all boils down to perception or not. And if then the perception changes, then how do we maintain our brand image? Take the That's question. my question. With your permission, I'll take the question. Yes, Indian companies have got a big road to travel. They have to change the perception. To begin with, they must start in the regional blocks. It should be done with a survey model from commodity, it has to become a regional brand, and from regional brand, it has a national brand, and from national, it will go international. It's not a day, you know, one day after. It's a very long-term sustainable thing. In fact, I have a model again, which I call SCA, Sustainable Competitive Advantage. Any Indian company to have a JV with Italian company must have a sustainable competitive advantage. Michael Porter used the term CA, competitive advantage. I have developed it to call it sustainable competitive advantage. And yes, sir, you're very right. We need a lot of research, anything, because, you know, uh, my perception of a particular brand of shoes, if I may use this thing, is different from that of my son and that of my, my grandson, you know. So three different, same family, but three different perceptions. So perceptions, we need a lot of research, yes, a lot of research, a lot of fashion, 
uh, attending a lot of fashion uh, programs. And one more thing, we have to understand that branding is not a one-day affair. It's a very long-term sustainable activity. Branding is not just, you know, I decide to do branding, it will be coming. Indian companies believe in that. And answering a little in a different manner, two of the great Indian businessmen, they also started very small. The House of Tata's, Jamshed T. Tata, and the House of Bidlas, Ghanasham Dalji Bidla, they also started very small. So not only Italian companies, but also Indian companies, the big Indian business houses. And we all know the story of Ambani's. I intentionally did not give the story of Ambani. You all know that he started a petrol pump operator in Aden. So we all know that, you know, today Mukesh Ambani, his son is doing very good, you know, internationally also. Anyway, so that's a totally offline comment. But I'm sure Indian companies will have a big role to play. They have to change the perception. And Indian young entrepreneurs have got a big role to play. They have to change the perception of the MSME sector, micro, small, and medium enterprises, and they have to become global class. In fact, I would use the new term global class, not world class, global class. And Man. if they think that you know they are not getting market share overnight, bad luck. Get may share may... by quality and all. Yes, sir. May I ask? May may just sir, I would like to underline what uh, Mr. Mafioletti said. That is uh, very important. When when he says, uh, "Hey, the Italian people don't care." about uh, if uh, is uh, uh, required uh, or no. The Italian people, uh, they start to make uh, some production because they believe in that production and uh, they don't care about the final cost. The final cost, it will be the second part of the, of the journey. But first of all, for the Italian people, the main important thing is uh, to get the right quality and the product that it can believe. That is the point. I'm right, Mr. Claudio? Again, again, Mr. Uh, 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 in my, in my uh, mind. Is it this branding is for the... Uh, time is running, so please, we have to start. Okay, that is the last question. Uh, uh, is branding only specific to certain products or it is sort of for the total company image? Uh, sorry, uh, very, very briefly, because I wanted to add something to Mr. Data's question and Mr. Banerjee's answer uh, regarding perception. Perception is, a, for Italians at least, in general, is a consequence of what you do and Italians tend to focus and dedicate and invest a lot on the products, much more than on the marketing, perhaps. Um, it happens in various uh, uh, um, verticals of the made in Italy <clears throat> because of the same principle that Mr. Gualtieri pointed out. It needs to be something good, impeccable, that people will like, and that should represent fully what the entrepreneur has in his mind and what the, the company has been doing. It is indeed a very long fair affair branding and it doesn't stop with a, with a marketing campaign, but embedded into that, in, into that, there should be all the values and all the reasons why that company and then brand stands for, and that should be maintained over, over time. And then people will perceive what that brand stands for immediately and almost automatically but it doesn't work the other way around it starts from the product not from the marketing yes yes mr yeah yeah because uh manoj bhaiya he wants to ask one question to the panel I know, I know. so after that please you close the hand. i know uh, mr manoj please ask your question Mr. Manoj. Mr. Ma Mr. Manoj. Yes, sir. Yes, just you, please ask the question. Yeah, I, anybody can read my question. I had just one question that uh, we are talking about uh, made in Italy. And we are as a country focusing very strongly now in uh, Atmanirbhar Bharat, you know. 
what are the few bullet points which we should look as a country to do to make similar footsteps of made in Italy or you know making India a global brand? So I will ask very succinctly. Uh, start buying Italian technology and then having joint ventures to produce in India. Right. Very good. <laughs> very short and good reply. Very thank good. You, thank you. Thank Absolutely. you. To all the speakers. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that is the step which, that is the step which we took as a company 15 years back and now also we are doing the same with Mr. Wilberto. <laughs> Yes, Mr. Banerjee, thank you. Yeah, but it is, a, it is, a, may had one thing. So it is, a, this is an, a part, uh, this, this will be a part of the journey, but there is another part of the journey that India, they, they have to sustain. I mean, uh, uh, the India, they need uh, uh, to be able uh, to close the circle, to close the circle and uh, to believe in the product, uh, I mean, till the hand, till the hand. Uh, because uh, it is clear that in the next uh, 20, 30 years, uh, there is a big occasion for India, for sure, for sure, because uh, uh, for sure in the, in the next future, uh, the, 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 the Asian countries uh, can be the 50, 55 percent of the global market, no? So that, uh, but you know, global, to sustain the global market, uh, you need also to have uh, the right products, the right products uh, and, uh, you know, take care about the product till the hands, till the hands, not only, not only, not till the hand, not only, not only uh, the first step uh, of the, of uh, part of the, part of the production. All the production needed to be controlled properly. That is the point. Uh. That is the point. Even you know, even even the, the the one box delivery, it is very very important. It is very very important. And what what Mr. Mafioletti said, just uh, not far away where I'm seated, there is one of the big industries make the machinery for the box, box for Apple, box for all the brands like Gucci and like these people. You can imagine the people, they spend a lot of money just to study and just to have one perfect packaging. Yeah. You know, is a, we are talking about small things, but all the small things, they can, they, they can give the visibility of the, of, the, of the industries, of the brand, of the companies. All right. Thank you, Mr. Galberto. Thank you. So, it's a really a great pleasure. Us, Thank you for all. Yeah, let, no, we'll, we'll continue organizing a webinar on this topic in future, and we'll be requiring your help and assistance um, in organizing such events and to help the industry to promote their own brand so that industry can be sustainable in future. So, can, I, uh, can, I, can I just add one more thing sir, regarding the letter? Because we have not... I, I am not speak about the letter, but now I can come inside to the question. Just to give you one example, uh, linked to what Mr. Claudio said, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the Italian machinery, for example, Italian machinery for letter is the top of the world. It's the top of the world. And uh, they can help the people uh, to reach one better result. And the people today, they are not thinking to invest in this field. That is very important. It's another very important point. Yeah, yeah. Thank All right. you. Thanks I so request much. our uh, uh, coordinator, HRD committee, Mr. Yeah. Ratan Chaudhary, to deliver a word of thanks. Okay, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, clear. Yeah. Uh, good evening. Respect. I, I just uh, stopped my video just to make it uh, audible good. Uh, Respected President, General Secretary, Honorable Speaker, Distinguished Guest, and my friend. Today's webinar is organized to fulfill our Honorable Prime Minister's aspiration to make in India project. And later, the Chairman of Council and our Vice President, Mr. Dr. Siram, uh, identifies the importance of this project, and the Government of India allocate the fund to do this. However, with this inspiration, we, we uh, from our HR group, we organized this webinar with the CEO of Indo-Italian Chamber of Commerce 
and Mr. Gulbato, a global uh, and a global reputed person and a re and retired professor of Indian Institute of Management to make it a meaningful. I, on behalf of the committee, thanks to Mr. Claudio, Mr. Gulbato, and Professor Ashok Banerjee for their sharing their valuable idea. I also thank all the participants to uh, join that webinar to make it successful. Uh, with this, I wind up my meeting and thank you. Good night. Have a good good uh, night. Uh, good sleep. Thank you very much, everybody. Okay. Good night.